Hi, this is Model Building Start to Finish. Welcome back. It's John. I'm here with Dan. And we're working on this SD40-2 still. Uh -huh. And it uh, looks like you got some parts hanging out there, Dan. What, what's up with this? Well, this is material to build handrails. That's what we're going to do. So these parts here are the stanchions. And then this is a piece of uh, 015 brass wire. Okay. I'll use the wire for the handrail itself, and then the stanchions uh, will be the supports. Yeah, they hold it up. Right. I'm using precision scale stanchions, and there are three different kinds. Uh, this one here are the shorter type that go on the sides of the locomotive. This is part number 3935. Okay. These are for the ends of the engine on the pilot or above the pilots, and these are part number 3937. Okay. And these are the tall ones that go alongside uh, on the fireman's side on the side where the uh, blower duct is over here. Um, and these are part number 39073. It looks like there's a step down, though. Do you have to have a longer one for that? No, you use the short ones here and then the tall ones here and the handrail actually has a, a bend in it. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you're going to have to bend the wire for that, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Oh, this is fun. Yeah. So this is a bit of work, <laughs> but I like the results of using um, brass wire because uh, it produces a pretty durable handrail and it also takes paint well. Yeah. Um, now you could um, use 012 brass wire, uh, which might be actually a little closer to scale. The O12 outside diameter is about one inch in, in scale terms, mm -hmm. and the O15 is about an inch and a quarter. So not a whole lot of difference, but, you know, a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and use O15 on this model. Um, you just want to make sure not to put too much paint on it because the paint will actually make it look thicker. Uh -huh. When you bend the handrails, it's good to have something to copy. Now, there are handrails that come with the Blue Box model that, even though I don't use those, you can use them as a pattern. So they're generally in the right shape then? More or less, yeah. There are also handrail kits you can buy that, that have some of this stuff pre-bent for you. Oh, that would be really helpful in this case. Yeah. Or you can use uh, photographs. Or uh, Atherin also sells plastic handrails for the SD40-2. Um, now, they may not fit with the, the longer anti-climber, but the, the ones on the side would probably work. And if you don't want to use them directly or... Uh, you can use them as a pattern. Mm -hmm. Now, since I've already made this other engine, I'm going to use this one as the pattern for the new one uh -huh. so that um, basically what I want to do is just copy all the bends that I made on this one. So I generally don't use any special bending pliers, um, but I do use a couple different types of needle nose pliers. This one is sharper, so this is good for making sharp bends. It has nice small jaws and they're very crisp. This is a fairly new tool. So if I want to make a nice sharp bend like that, it works pretty well. If I wanted to make a softer bend, I might use these older ones. Oh, right. The edges are kind of worn off, huh? Yeah. So it makes a little bit more of a rounded bend. You know, I just thought of something. It would be possible if you wanted to, to file the edge of plier jaws to create a tool that can make roundish bends, huh? You could, yeah. Huh. And they actually, there are um, bending pliers that they have too oh, okay. that actually have special shaped jaws yeah. for doing different things. But I just use these. So here I have the handrail after I bent it, nearly complete. So the next step will be to start attaching it to the model. The only bend I didn't make yet was the bend where it goes into the cab. And I'm going to wait till after I drill the holes to do that. Oh, you have to drill the holes into the cab? Is that it? Right. The okay. cab doesn't have any holes pre-drilled. So before I mount the handrail, I have to drill some holes in the model so that it has somewhere to anchor to. So what I've done is the handrail that I just made on this side and also the one that I'll need to make for, for this end, um, both mount on the cab, and they mount at the same level. Oh. So... I put a piece of blue tape on here so yeah. I can drill the holes at exactly the same level. Yeah. That's your straight edge. Right. Because if, if they're mismatched, it looks really bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, once the hole is there, you know, I really don't want to have to fill it in and start over. So um, I'd like to do it right. Uh-huh. So this is approximately, um, there's a little seam on the cab, and this is about one scale foot up. Mm-hmm. 
And you, you did this based on pictures or how photos did you... and yeah, and other models. Oh, okay. Um, so, and the hole should be real close, but not quite on the edge of the ca- cab. Mm-hmm. So kind of like right here and against the tape. And what size of a bit is this? This is a number 78 drill bit. And I'm just going to drill it. And you said the wire was 015? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, it went right in there. Yeah, this this is, they call these Canon thin wall cabs for a reason. Yeah. So. Um, I guess I just figured out the reason. Yeah. I, I didn't know it was called a thin wall cab though. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Okay, I also need to drill a hole in the step well. Okay. And I'm going to drill a hole in exactly the same spot where I filled the hole earlier. That may sound a little strange, but um, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. That does sound a little weird. So there's a little green spot where the putty uh, is. Uh-huh. And I'm just going to drill through the center of that. Okay. And I'm going to drill this at a slight angle. So I wanted the drill to be more or less perpendicular to this panel here. But if you notice, this panel is kind of angled a bit relative to us, the engine. I don't know if you can see it from the camera. Hard, yeah, kind of hard to tell. Well, anyway, you want to you want to more or less drill it perpendicular to this piece right here. The angled part, right? Right. Yeah. So the next step is to solder the stanchions to the handrail. And back in the day, which wasn't so long ago, um, they used to all look like this one. Looks like nice. brass. Yeah, they were all nice shiny brass, and they soldered really easily. Uh, nowadays, I don't know what this is. It's, I think it's brass with some other stuff in it, um, and this is a lot harder to solder, so it requires a little bit extra work. So this is the back of the stanchion, and there's a little bit of uh, a cupped part on the top where it grabs the wire. Oh, okay, so that's the holder for the, the rail, basically? Right. So what I have here is a file that's got a semi-rounded profile and a bit of a sharp edge. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to run that in that little groove. Are you just trying to make it more pronounced or what? I'm trying to, to shine it up a little bit to get some of this. I don't know if it's a patina or what's what's on here. But I find it's easier to solder if if you do this. What are we going to do, eat chili now? <laughs> what is this? I don't think you want to eat this. Um, this is paste flux. Oh, for soldering. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a bowl of chili. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I must be hungry. So um, what I want to do is just scrape a little of this into the little pocket of oh, the stanchion. Yeah, so your solder will go to it, huh? Yeah, and then we'll take this thing and I'm going to clamp it in this little deal here so I can solder it. So now I'm going to take my soldering iron and heat it up and try to flow some solder into it. So you have to do this procedure with every single stanchion that you're going to use for this? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Oh, man. So this is going to fill that little thing up a little, you know. Uh That's okay, though, because we'll heat it again and get the wire in there. Okay, so this is the part where you have to be kind of careful and fast. Um, Because you don't want to obviously hurt the plastic with the soldering iron. Um, And I'm going to tin the wire just a little right above where the stanchion goes. Mm -hmm. And then back away. Well, I have another question. This might be a dumb question, but why not just put a piece of blue tape under it just in case something falls? I'm not so much worried about stuff falling. It's if the iron contacts the plastic. Oh, I see. Okay. So now I can place the stanchion. I see where you're going with this. Yeah, and I'm going to tape it down to try to keep it still so it doesn't pop out, hopefully. Yeah, I recall from the weathering and detailing videos that we did before that once you have a couple of these placed, it gets a lot easier because it has something holding it. Right. The first couple are always the hardest. So I'm just going to heat this up, and hopefully this will solder together fairly easily. So this one here is a little crooked, so I'm going to fix it just by heating it up again and scooting it over a bit. So now I'm going to go through and file off any excess solder. So if it's not a good solder or not a good grasp or whatever, you can fall off, right? Yeah, so this is a good test. Um, if it holds together, then it's probably soldered you know, well. Yeah, and it'll show that it's going to be strong too when you have it installed. Right. This is the completed handrail. Yeah, it's looking 
It looks nice. I mean, yeah, it's um, it's getting there, right? Um, and I've also gone ahead and made the one for the other side. The next thing will be the handrails uh, on either side on the front, and then on the front pilot, and then also on the rear pilot. Okay, so I've bent up the two front handrails now. And I'll take the nose off to make it a little easier to see. They both have a bend right here. They're kind of similar, and there's only two stanchions that we need to install for these things. Um, although there is a bit of a wrinkle in that um, there's no holes drilled up here for the mounting pin on the stanchion. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to drill our own holes. So the stanchions have a mounting pin, like I said, and then there's also this other little piece, which I think on the prototype is a bracket. Uh -huh. um, however, sometimes this gets in the way. So sometimes I like to file this off just on some of the stanchions. It makes it easier to fit them. Uh huh. So that's going to be right up against the, the floor, kind of? This, this butts, it would, yeah, it would like stick up from the floor, but because we put the deck plating on, mm -hmm. sometimes there isn't enough thickness yeah. and so these, these interfere. So um, sometimes it's easier just to file them off, and it's really not something that's that noticeable. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think it'll be missed. No, by, not really. Yeah, by anybody, unless they're really intimately familiar with how these things look. Right. Okay, so another little wrinkle in front is that the two very front stanchions on these SD40-2s actually have this little channel filled in instead of being looking like a channel like the rest of them. Uh -huh. I want to fill that in with solder, and in order to do that, I need to uh, clean this up a little first. So I'm going to use a wire brush and a motor tool and polish it a bit. I found this Tix Flux. Someone actually recommended this to me. So it comes in this little bottle with a brush. So I'll open it up and I'll just brush it on the stanchion that I want to fill in. And I put my stanchion in a little, uh, one of those sprung tweezers so that I'll, I can hold it more easily. And I'll just heat it up and flow some solder into it Oh, like look at that. that. What, that took like two seconds or less? Yeah. So now I can just use a file and some sandpaper to smooth this out and make it look flat. So this is one of the stanchions that's not filled versus the one that's filled. And I've gone ahead and sanded the, the one that I filled in. I may need to touch up the sanding after I solder it to the handrail if it heats up at all. Oh, right, because it could flow, huh? It could melt it a little bit, yeah. but um, it sands really easily because solder is pretty soft. Yeah, and the, run, the one on the right definitely does not show that channel, so you did a good job yeah. filling it. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure why they did that on the SD40-2, but I did notice that in photos that the two front ones don't have the channel. Just to make it harder for modelers. Probably, just to see if you're paying attention. All right, so to solder these together, um, first I'm going to use the stanchion that we filled in because that one already has a hole uh, in the sill. Oh, I see. And I'm just going to put a little bit of flux... I already pre-primed the stanchion with some solder behind it, like I did on the other ones. Mm -hmm. But using this new flux, this flux works way better, by the way, than what I was using before. Okay. So use Tix flux and not chili. Yeah. Whatever, whatever that stuff Whatever was. that was. So the other two stanchions are a little bit tricky because there's no hole. So what I did was I temporarily just set this one on. It's not soldered yet. And I need to mark the place where the pin hits the plastic here. And I've already looked on, this is the fireman's side, and the stanchion's pretty much even with the front of the battery box door. Well, I have a dumb question. Why wouldn't you just take your drill, instead of marking it, just drill where the thing is? Like, just scoot it out of the way and drill it on the spot? Yeah, what, I could do that, too. Why, that would probably why, work. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, why mark it first when you could just drill it on the, I don't, yeah. know, I don't know. I'm just. Yeah, we could do that, too. That should work. We've turned the model around so Dan can really see what he's doing and where to put it, the hole. Because you only, if you do it this way, you only get one chance, right? I mean, you don't want to... Pretty mean, much, yeah. Yeah, I mean, unless you want to have to fill it and, you know, nobody wants to do that. So, moment of truth. Um, looks like it's fitting pretty well. Nice. Uh, so, I can go ahead and try to solder this on. You have to be really careful not to heat this up too much because this cannon plastic is very thin. 
right? Um, and metal does conduct heat. Right. So the trick is just to work quickly. So it's basically the same procedure on the engineer's side. The only um, additional wrinkle is that there's really not a lot of material right here. Oh, so you have to be careful, huh? You got to be really careful when you drill this to make sure that you don't, you know, split through and have the hole break out, you know, the side or something. Yeah. So for the front and rear, we're going to need uh, six of these end handrails and then two more of the short side handrails. And I've already prepared these the same way I prepared the other ones that we've used. You mean pre-tinning uh, it? Yeah, I pre-tinned it and I filed off the little nub on the back. Mm -hmm. um, so those are pretty much the same as we've already done. So the end stanchions don't have any mounting pin. Okay. And they have this little step. Oh, what is it? Rest on the floor kind of? Well, it, I think it's designed to rest on the edge of the sill. Okay. But that's not what we need it to do. We actually need a flat bottom because it's going to rest right on the deck. Oh, so you're going to have to cut off that one piece? Yeah, I have Eey. to file down this thing so, so that it's all flat. So I'm going to basically file this step down part so it's even with the other part right. of the bottom. Now I've filed all of these flat on the bottom. Trouble is, is that if I wanted to glue this onto the model, it ha is going to have no strength at all. Yeah, it would just be a butt joint, huh? Right. And the minute something touches it, it's going to snap off. So um, what I like to do is to drill into the bottom. And um, what are you going to put a post up through the yeah, floor kind of? Basically, yeah. So the hardest part is getting this started. You try to keep the drill in the center and then just very oh, slowly. Man, that's some small work right there. Yeah, you don't have to go in too far, thankfully. Um, You're just, just, just far enough to stabilize a little piece of brass wire. So you're going to make a, a little peg, sort of? Or is that yeah, it? I'm going to make a little peg. Okay, so now that I have a hole, I've stuck a little piece of the same brass wire that I'm using for the handrails, Yeah. the O15. And that is some small work there. Yeah, this really does add a lot of reinforcement. And then I'll just put some of that flux on there. You're going to make this... I see what you're doing. Yeah, and then we'll solder this. You're adding a post to your post, kind of. Right. And don't worry if we get a little extra solder, we can file that off. So this is what a couple of these look like after I've finished with them. I've cut the little posts fairly short. Yep. Um, and what I will eventually do is drill holes in the deck, and then these will stick through. Right. And that gives it a nice reinforcement, so they're fairly strong. I was just making a comment off camera that it looks like he's tracing something here. Yeah, I'm building one of the end handrails. This will be for the rear, basically just by trying to copy the plastic atherin handrail that I have. Yep. So I'm just lining it up and just putting the pliers where the bends are. Just taking my time and then bending the wire to try to match. It's kind of a long and tedious process, but... The accuracy is a lot better doing it this way than if you were to try to just... Yeah, if, just than just guesstimating or something. Yeah. So the front one's a little harder because it doesn't match this. Um, so it starts off the same way with this lower part. But then here, instead of bending this wire this way, I need to bend it forward. What? What? Like this. Oh, and you're getting that from pictures, though? Yeah, from pictures... And of course, I've done one of these before. So, uh -huh. but yeah, I have a, actually a really good photo of fifty-one twenty-six, the real fifty-one twenty-six. Yeah, cool. So um, that I found on the internet, and it shows how this works pretty well. So, if someone doesn't have pictures, it would have to be an educated guess, or maybe just bend what's on the. Yeah, or I mean, if you were modeling, say, 5123 or something, you could probably use the picture of fifty-one twenty-six because the railings are pretty much the same you know yeah well that's still guessing though right because well, you don't, don't have it in front of you yeah i mean you working from photos is kind of a guesstimation but you know how tall the stanchions are right so that whatever you make has to match the height of that yeah off the deck so you you kind of some of the dimensions are kind of built in yeah. for you so when it's done you end up with something that looks like this right so the handrail the reason why i bent that forward because it 
comes out a little bit here and then it bends back in. Yeah. You can see that. So at this point, it's a good idea to kind of test fit it. I can see why it goes out because that snooty, snooty nose goes out too behind yeah. it. Yeah. And you got yeah. this big anti climber here. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But one of the things you want to check for is the height here should be approximately the same as the height here. Looks right. Because the stanchion is going to be the same height, basically. Uh huh. So I figured out where to drill the hole the same way that I did with the ones in the, the side and the front here, uh, just by putting the stanchion on. Okay. So now I can put that in the hole. And these are the, the ones that go on the side here are the ones that are the regular stanchions, just like we've used everywhere else. It looks hard, like it's going to be hard to hold it there while you're soldering. It is a little bit tricky to get, the, get them started. So just like on the side ones, it's hard to get them started. Right. Oh, got your flux. Yeah, so we'll do the flux, and then we'll solder it. And if it's not completely straight yet, that's okay. We can fiddle with it a little later. I marked the center line of the deck plating here with the pencil just very lightly. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yeah, by running it down the, the diamond plate, which is already straight. And I measured a scale foot and a quarter to either side. Okay. And I've marked locations where to drill. So these will be where the holes go. I don't know if this is 100% perfect, but it's close. And right. I think it should look, it'll look okay. All right. So I, I'm using a number 78 bit. If that's too small, I can always ream it out with a 76 if I need to. Right. And it's important to note that you're going to drill all the way through, right? Yes. And then that little peg that we soldered on the bottom of the stanchion will fit in this hole. So now I've got these fitted into their holes temporarily. Um, oh, so they're not glued yet. They're not glued. They're just sitting there. I'm not going to glue the handrails on until after the painting's done. Oh, okay. Some railroads, you, I might glue the end handrails on before the paint. Like if this was a Southern Pacific engine that was with gray handrails and a gray deck plating and gray right. sills and where it's all the same color, you could do that. Has to do with the paint scheme, huh? Right. But the Santa Fe paint scheme is more complicated, and it would just make life really hard if you glued the handrails on at this point. Yeah. This is the, the other piece of the front handrail. Now, if you've noticed, the stanchions that I just put in on the in the holes that I just drilled uh -huh. actually have holes in them. They're not cupped like these that f just fit on the, the rod. Uh -huh. um, these actually have a hole, and you have to put the rod through it. Okay. So if this was going to remain one piece, I would be in trouble now. because, well, Or you'd have to thread them on somehow, right? <laughs> well, you, you, I can't because these yeah. are soldered on, right? But what I'm going to do is because there's going to be a drop chain in the middle anyway, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. Oh, man. All that work and you're cutting it in half. Yeah. That's okay, though. <laughs> no, I know. You're going to trim those back too, right? Right. Okay. So after finagling all this into alignment... Go ahead and put some flux on this. Yeah, coming together one step at a time. So I should mention, uh, since we're kind of talking about this stuff anyway, we were talking off camera, and the procedure here isn't installing the handrails, but it's just building the handrails. Right. Once they're all fitted and I, I have everything straight and it looks good, uh, I'll actually remove them. Right. Um, and, store it and store them somewhere and they'll be painted separately from the engine and they won't actually be put back on until almost the very end. Right. I've got this half of the handrail built and I've still got this little excess piece of wire. Uh -huh. um, I'm not going to cut it all the way off. Okay. I'm going to cut about here. And the, and the reason for that is what? Well, the Are reason make for a that. Hook or? Yes. I'm going to file this down now. And what I want to do is to reduce the diameter of this pipe and make it slightly pointy. Uh-huh. And then I'll form it into a hook to hold the chain. I thought there might be a hook involved because I know there's a chain coming. Yeah. So I filed that thinner, bent it up into a little hook shape, and then nipped off a little more of the excess. It's a very small hook. Yeah. Well, you, it has to fit through the a link in the chain. Uh -huh. But uh, doing this is a little more secure than just trying to glue the chain to the stanchion. Oh, yeah. 
What about the chain? Does that come later too? We'll put the chain on last. Yeah, that'll yeah. that'll be way after everything's painted and we're doing a final assembly. Okay. So next we can move our way to the rear. That's pretty much the same procedure. The only difference is is that I have to drill four holes instead of two. Okay. Well, we'll take a look at it uh, yeah. when you once you've got it partially done. Yeah. Looks like four posts. Yeah. So I've located them and got them installed, and now I just need to put the handrail through and solder it. Yeah, from here, this one right here looks a little crooked. Well, they may be still. I mean, they're just, you know, they wiggle around a little bit. Oh, okay. You so know, they'll, be this point. they'll be straight when you solder the, the, the rails on, though, right? Because right? that stabilizes it. Right. So I've cut this handrail in half, just like I did in the front. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to thread the post on it and it's, you kind of got to wiggle it to get it over these little bends uh -huh. but it's not too hard and through the magic of tv slash video editing there it is yeah i actually ended up having to bend a new railing for the rear because i made the mistake and i did this with my other model 5111 also i should have remembered but by following the athern handrail it didn't match the photos of the Santa Fe units that I have. Oops. Um, it kind of came up here, and there was more of a sticky outy part here before it went down, whereas the Santa Fe ones I see, they just bend and go yeah. almost straight into the stanchion. Yeah. So I bent new ones. <laughs> well, it looks good. But other than that, it, it, it's pretty much finished the same way the front one is, and, you know, it, it can... This is still, you know needs to be evened out a little bit but some of that can even happen when it's finally placed there right later on but anyway this is pretty much done as far as handrails go so i think this is a good place to stop okay and uh we can pick it up next time with the uh, more detail work all right so i'll see you then dan okay see ya